Without further ado, I am actually finally bringing you guys the content that I provided, that I said I'd provide for you, which is the, the nine step process that we use for every project that we do, construction, renovation, design. Um, there are so many different levels of investors in this group, professionals, um, people who are just thinking about getting started, and those who have been in the industry for 30 years. But if for those of you, of you who don't know me, I'm Liat Siegel, Design Director of Hadar Interiors. Um, I've been doing design for the last 15 years, um, and for the last about, let's say, five or six, I've been really ROI obsessed in terms of um, maximizing every square inch and ensuring that every step of the process is systemized um, so that you can maximize cash flow, you can maximize property value, and really create the most of your space. So I don't have my Apple Pen uh, today, so this might be a little bit more difficult to do, but um, let's done is better than perfect, so I'm going to simplify the process for you. We're going to go through everything from the beginning so that we can cover all the bases. I'm going to walk through every step and I'll, I'll share my process and really giving you guys everything that you need to do these things on your own um, without even needing to hire a designer. Um, of course, if you need design help, I'm always here to get a quote for you or um, you know put something together. But these tools are going to help you systematize the process so that you can go out and do it by yourself, whether it's picking the right tile that is going to be affordable, but that is going to create that cohesive look, um, construct tips and, and tools in your tool belt that you can make the process easier. I find that planning throughout my career, I found that planning is the key to success. So when you have things properly planned out, the budget is optimized, the timeline is optimized, the setup is optimized, everything gets better when you have the plan. So when you come to um, to break ground or you come to get a quote from your con contractor, you already have a takeoff. You already have a list of items that need to be done. Maybe you have a list of materials, you know how much it's going to cost you so that you have the upper hand. So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to walk you through the overview process and then as the weeks go on I'm going to walk you through every single step in the nitty gritty details but I want you to have a 30,000 foot view of what the process should look like and maybe you know most of this stuff but maybe there are some details that I can fill in for you that will give you an advantage because even having a 10% advantage what could that mean for the um, ROI of your property? What could that mean for the value of your property? So let's get into it. So the traditional um, process for both design and architecture are fairly the same. There are seven main phases. Let's see, four, five, six, seven, okay? Um, not, not even, but don't have my pencil today, so we're doing the best we can. So um, the first phase is the programming phase. This is where you gather all the details, you get um, site documents, um, all the information that you would need for a project. This is where that happens. All the ideation, gathering all the details, the measurements, that is its own phase and it's really important because without that foundation, right? Like if you were going to draw a triangle, right? Instead, then it would be the bottom part, the foundational aspect. That is the programming phase. It's where you, ha if you don't have these details, then everything else kind of falls apart. Okay. So this is step number one, super, super important. Then after that comes the schematic phase. This is where once we have all of the documentation from the programming phase, we create floor plans, sketches, we start ideating a little bit and just have rough a rough idea. And as we go along this path, we're getting further and further to a more defined plan, a more clear plan. So once we have all the floor plans and the ideas together, the rough ideas, the brainstorming, then we go into design development. 
And design development, again, is that next step where every time we are going further um, along this, this axis, we're getting clearer and clearer in terms of all the nitty gritty details of the design planning. So a lot of things are more fleshed out in this phase. And so in this phase, we would put together um, a clearer idea of material colors, um, like, you know, this, um, this fixture, these fixtures are going to be, you know, this style, this, um, you know, this tile is going to be that color. So, and, and it's going to be within that uh, price range. So that when we get to the next phase, phase, which is construction documents, we're putting together an entire plan that our, con our construction team is now going to have to be able to implement. Imagine having an entire booklet, an entire plan for them ready to go. When they hit the construction site, when they, they, they're not bothering you with all these details, they have everything laid out for them. Yes, of course, there's RFIs, you have um, uh, change orders and all of that kind of stuff, but it becomes a lot simpler when every single detail is laid out for you. And so the next phase is more focused on construction than design, but all of this is helping you make sure that you have everything ready for the following phases. So all the following phases, again, as we're building up the, the pyramid, we're getting, we have more and more pieces in place. So the following phases will be a lot clearer and easier. And so the next phase is the uh, building permit phase. And in the building permit phase, that's obviously um, where you get all the permits and uh, proper um, documentation to uh, get your property in motion for construction. You have, after that, you have the bidding um, and negotiating phase, which is where now that you've had all the documentation ready to go and you have a clear plan of, of everything that's gonna go into the space, you're able to then go to your team, go get or get uh, a bids on the materials, on the plans more easily. There's a lot less guesswork that's involved and there's a lot less uh, margin of error that goes into this. And then finally, in the final phase, we have the construction administration phase. And that is where you have your uh, project management. Um, you make sure that in installation is, is uh, accurate, that all the different um, uh, trades are working together, that there's collaboration. So these are, this is a typical um, design planning system that most architects and designers uh, go by or should go by. So now I'm going to talk about the nine step system that we use. You have your traditional seven steps. But then we've created a path. To help you go from dream to reality. Reality or ROI. Okay, and then that consists of nine steps. So these seven phases have just been reorganized in a different way. So this is the typical design system that goes alongside our nine step process. Let's go over here. This was drawn on my tablet, so it's easier <laughs> to look at, um, which is always better. Okay, so we have the nine, we have the seven steps here of the traditional design process alongside our nine step system. And the first step, that foundational step, is called born to soar. 
And it's really just about the mindset in terms of understanding that a beautiful space means that your property value increases. So there's ROI in a beautiful space. Okay. And step number two and three, these, these are this first layer here is all about the planning process. So we've emphasized with, with our um, system to um, really put a lot into the planning process. So to set you up your project up for success, that fair, if you go back to that first um, quote that I, that I posted about the um, taking, I think it was uh, four hours to sharpen the ax and two hours to cut the tree, right? It's that analogy where the more time that we're spending planning out the, the project and our goals and our objectives, the better off you're going to be in terms of ensuring that everything is streamlined and you get, you get to stick to the budget and that everything goes much smoother. And then step four, five, and six is about systemizing the, the planning. So you've got how the space is organized, um, how the space is set up in a strategic way. And then finally, creating those documents so that they can be um, improved. Rather than just flying by the seat of your pants, now you have um, a clear plan, a very clear path to how the rest of the project is going to come together because it's easy to just go to the store and pick out, you know, tiles or rely on the contractors to put everything together. But if you have that clear plan in hand, you can make adjustments easier because you have your con you constantly have this 30,000 foot view of all the components and how everything comes together and all the 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 different aspects of the job are are in place. And um, it's easier to to make changes and and make adjustments. And then the final phase is really about the end user and how they perceive the space. Understanding what who your uh, target market is uh, will dictate how the space looks. Are you putting in budget items? Are you do you need to spend a little extra so that you can charge a little bit more for for rent um, or for the the price if you're fixing and flipping? Um, having the user experience is also important in how the space is set up and what kind of uh, reaction they're going to have to coming in the space. Is it, or do you have the marketing materials, the like, you know, having renderings or having the, the space staged and set up so that the, there's an online to offline experience that you have a set of expectations that are clear throughout. And then finally is the branding and are you creating is your company creating a, a branded feel and look? How is your company perceived? Now, the last steps are really kind of optional. I do definitely recommend them, but the first steps are the most important. Those are the foundational steps of any project. So as the weeks come along, I'm going to dive deeper into um, how this actually looks. This is just a lot of theory and um, scribbles for right now, but I did want to make sure to get something out to you and um, just explain the process a little bit. Um, I will do a screen share in terms of how I go about selecting, um, for instance, the style schemes, um, creating per perhaps, uh, let me know if you'd like this, a construction planner for you so that you can create the entire, have the entire process in your hand um, and walk you through it step by step. Um, creating a prepackaged plan so that you can save money um, in the long run and just use these again and again. So all the tile selections, um, all the finish selection, all the appliance selections, everything set up and ready to go for you so that you just need to go and implement it. Um, so any of these, if any of these things sound like you'd like them, uh, please comment below. Uh, just let me know, you know, with a single word, uh, planner or prepackaged design um, or whatever it is that you um, have gotten out of this, um, feel free to comment below and we'll see you on the other side. Again, looking forward to sharing with you my knowledge and hope that it helps create an easier, seamless process for your construction journey.